My name is Inga-Lena Klenell and I come from Sunne. It's a small place in Värmland near Karlstad. And I have a um, studio there with my husband. He is a glass blower. And now I have two sons, and one of my sons is Simon, and he's also in this exhibition. And my oldest son, I have four, my oldest son is a designer at Itala in Finland, making glass and furniture. I think it's a long story because I've been working with glass 40 years, and I wonder why. Do I do that? But I think I've been interested in craft when I was a child. For me, it was a normal situation to make, uh, always make something, because my family did that. Uh, but now I know it's not what uh, all children did. <laughs> No, it, but I mean now, now I can say I've, I've always been interested in glass because it's 40 years and 40 years of my life is my whole life. But I thought from the beginning I choose between textile and ceramics and I, I, I decided to take ceramic because I met a young boy who made wonderful ceramics, so I thought, I, this is my way. And that was a new way to make ceramic too, and he's very, he's very famous now in Sweden. Uh, and um, So I took ceramic, and one uh, course there is glass, because in that time we had to learn craft. So we were sent to Orefors, the glass school in Orefors, from the, it was the art school in Stockholm, and then, um, then I was hooked. <laughs> I have, uh, during my life, during these 40 years, I've studied uh, different theoretical subjects, and I have 15 years studies in eco-philosophy, and I have a master degree in eco-philosophy and, uh, and environmental science, so that's what I work with and <clears throat> I, it, I think it's because I, I live in the countryside and you, you, you try to understand what this is and I'm, I'm also interested in history and um, places uh, meeting I mean like like this it's really fascinating to come to a place like this with so powerful history so I mean then I start a project about this <laughs> and so that's how I work more conceptual, I think, and combined with craft. I've been in the United States 15 years working with a um, colleague, Beth Lipman. She's very, she's a very good glass artist, and uh, I think that relation has, for both of us, made a lot with our work. And we started, we met in Italy teaching for Urban Glass in New York, uh, summer class, and then we said we should do this together. We, when we called it the American-Scandinavian connection, the class, because we were so different. She's much younger than me. She's in my oldest son's age. And, but we really met. And then after seven years, we said Pref, we should do something together, not only teach. And we made the, the big project Glimmering Gone from the Museum of Glass in Tacoma, where the question was, is it possible to work with someone with a, a notion apart? And we had such a strong relation, so we did it. And we hadn't seen it. We, we shipped the pieces. It's 10 meters wide installation with a, a, a landscape inspired by a, 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 an artist who lived in Tacoma. Um, her name is Abby Williams Hill. And then we made a landscape with one part is American and one part is um, from, from Sweden and my, my, where I live. 
And when we came there, it was over 500 pieces of glass. And it worked. Yeah, Homeland is a part of that. Glimmingon is the first. And when I was working with this in my homeland, uh, I made the sketches for Glimmingon. And the sketches is here now. And I started to work on that project that was landscape and memory. And it's here. And um, then I, it, so I started this during the Glimmering Gone work. But, but when I came home f after Glimmering Gone, I started to make a, a project that is called Borderland. And Borderland is about a man who came, the first settler in Tacoma, he was Swedish. And then you start to think, wow, how do you think about your homeland when you settle down in, in Tacoma? And uh, what do you carry? What kind of landscape do you carry? And, uh, and also, I wanted to go home. I was there two months alone. And I was thinking, oh, my place is so beautiful. And my, my trees and my birch trees, my lake and my boat and my studio. So that was the, how it started. And, and then I thought, I would like to tell this story in uh, Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> and it's five years ago. <laughs> so when this came, now, it, I was ready. <laughs> I, but I had to work to put it together in a, so make it fin finish it. So I'm very inspired of, of United States because it's possible to do it here. I mean, that you have places like this that can, um, can take it. the homeland project and if you if you say it uh, simple it's uh, it's a technique that is called kiln forming and i have a big kiln or i have three big kilns and i make flat pieces this is made that part of it the trees are made from rods i have you know, like laid rods in a pattern and then you you fuse it high or low different i need different textures so that is that it's like drawing in the kiln with glass lines like this and then i make a mold if i want to have it textured from a mold they are not flat so it's it's it, it, i mean it's it's a kiln form technique the Postcards from Sweden, they are interesting because when I started with the Landscape and Memory Project for this, sending postcards to the United States from Sweden, I, um, I had a residency at a graphic school, a print, print school, and they had a new printer and they said, hmm, we have a new printer, we can print on everything, it can be uh, not flat. Uh -huh. So I took a piece of glass, and then the, the, <laughs> the master, the, the, in, the, the man there, when we made one piece, he called his colleague and said, come, you must come and see, it's fantastic. And I couldn't see that, really. So we started, and we worked on this to uh, develop the printing. It's a UV technique. That's also why I want to be in this room with it. It's, 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 it's UV. The, and it's, um, I made the, I took, it's, I, I've taken the photos myself and I'm not a good photographer. So it's the, the image you take from heart. Oh, you say, how, oh, what a beautiful tree, blip. And you have a bad camera. And then uh, I had a photographer who take, took photos of my glass and he's really good f photographer. So there were two different, the, the images from the heart and he's really good photos and then we I made the piece the glass from my photo in because it's of course made in a computer then steps and I saw oh I want to have a hole here and open it here and then I made the glass and then we printed that the 
The homeland uh, landscape, I think it's 130 pieces, so it's more you make pieces. And then uh, I can say when, when, I, when we made Limringon, I hadn't solved the problems how to make a tree. That took two years to make because I had uh, the, um, I was responsible to find out. And the trees were mine. It's like Swedish trees and I had made cylinders a lot before so we decided I should make the trees and Beth should make the waterfall <laughs> part and all that. And <clears throat> so that was the problem. But then I knew how to make trees so when I, borderland took one year or like a winter work, work, work like that. And this was made in two parts, um, three months perhaps. Yeah, yes, in a way it does, because it's, in, a, in one way you could say, it's a technique that is, uh, you can you do it. You can do it, if you can do it, <laughs> because it's easy, it's not like glass blowing, you have to learn and uh, exercise and so, you can do it. And I, I work with children, I, I guess I have four children uh, to follow their word, I've worked with art projects with children and glass. And uh, I had that as an idea that everyone can do this. The important thing is what you want to say and, and uh, express. And for me that has been important. Um, the technique can take, in glass, it's so technical. So it take, can take over. It's more about, see what I can do, more than what you, what you want to say. <laughs> and you can see that here. It's like, uh, and it's very um, gender related glass. The glass, you, if, especially here, you see the glass blowing is to make big glass, <laughs> heavy, you to show that you have muscles. And it's men, and the women can also sometimes look like, oh, you can see they're strong. But um, you can make big things without being strong that way. It's my way to say that. <laughs> my homeland, um, I think uh, I like my place, but at the same time it's, you wonder what is that, what is that word? What is home? And when you travel, I think home for me is where I have my, my close relations, my friends, my family, so I can, I can say Stockholm is also my home because my sons live there. So this can be my home, depends. And I, I, that's what you think when you, when you, how did I live here? I think they had families around and they had friends and they had experience with people they came here with. So you can change. But I think you carry the, the nature inside. Oh, I don't know. I'm, that, I'm curious about that. That's the most interesting part of it. I want to be a fly and listen. What do they think? I don't know. But I think I, when you make art, you want people to be touched in a way. And I want people not to be to be more open up something, <gasps> like that, I like that, <gasps> not, not that, to be touched, I don't want you to touch me, I want to, that they want me to touch them, to meet them, to open heart, I think. And Bertel Wallin, he's uh, interesting because he's, He's a part of the early studio glass movement that began in the United States and, and was one of the artists who started Pilchuk, the group, you know, the community of young people blowing glass like that. Like glass was a material that you could play with and I choose his first boats that made him famous and you can see them in big sizes and there is one here at the Institute too, 
I mean, it's, it's, it's a piece that you connect with Bertil Wallin, is the boats. Uh, but this is the first, this, it's the experiments, especially the one with the feather is wonderful, I think. It's so happy and it's so much, uh, it's so playful. And there is another one with a dead bird that I like, because <clears throat> my explanation, I've never seen that before. I've seen this both, they are filled with symbols and meaning and stories, personal stories, that you also can uh, project your own ideas and fantasies around, but my, I'm, uh, my boats, because I make boats, um, they are open. In the bottom it's like uh, no meaning, it's just flow. flow. You, you, life is flowing. I, what, what I've heard about his personal life, uh, he has a story that is in his family that is not, it's, it's, it's a sad story. So. Uh, so I think that is uh, more powerful than the boats I've seen after that. Um, and also the one coming out from the, from the rock and the combination with the transparency of, in the glass and the opaque stone. I like that. So my, my project was about his boats and life and death. Um, and the boat is a symbol for life, the, the journey we make, and also he is older than me, and he, when I began with Glass, he was the one. He was like, he and that group, his wife, Ulrika, they were the cool people. And they went to the United States, and they came home and made Glass like that. And I really liked Ulrika's Glass in that time. She thought they were also, came from the ceramic side. Um, but, and when you see his journey, and he's still working, I, I don't, I think you, to, you can talk about generations, but, and there, of course there will be a shift because life, it's how it is. But there are still people in the span of age working and still, so I, I choose him because of that. I want to make a casket decoration coming out from my, my bag. My handbag, you know, when you travel, you have a bag. You carry something. And I wanted to, to make that um, casket decoration um, on a clear casket. There are many caskets here. But, and it's a casket of the death of the kingdom of crystal. <laughs> and the change. I like the solarium of many reasons. It's the, it's the room for the sun. Here's the sunny room and the, the light. That's the, the light room and um, glass is so much connected with light. So that's what I think this was a p place to, to put uh, crystal clear things and use crystal clear boxes for it. Um, in, now we have, what do we have? We have three days left before the opening and it's a very exciting moment because when I work with these big projects, the landscape, I make the landscape on site and you never know. I don't know, I've never seen it myself and that's the most exciting part of it. You, you ship things and I've never seen it because it's too big to hang in my studio. I have it here and now we will see. I know what I have and I, now we have to try to because you have to relate to the room too uh, and this room is interesting because you have the light coming in from different places and you have to follow that one day to see where is the best way to do this and you need some shadows and some time during the day and we found yesterday it was evening it was very nice so I hope it will be good when I had borderland in Småland Bertil and Ulrika came for the opening and I said oh, I'm so happy you're here because you 
you are, and, and it opened, Osa Junilius, she opened, I, I chose her to open my exhibition because she was young and cool and is, instead of choosing a director for something, I said, I want Osa to open my exhibition. Oh, and that was very good because she said, oh, you were, you was the one, she was, you was before me and we saw you, like that. And I said the same to Bertil. And then I had an affirmation that I said, I want to make an exhibition with him. <laughs> he, he and make the room. So I'm um, now.